Hi everyone, my name is Jo Brooke. I'm head of the School of Archaeology in UCD. Today I'm going to talk to you about why archaeology is a great subject for you to study at university. I've pre-recorded this presentation, but I'll be available live at the end to answer any questions you might have. So, archaeology is the study of the past through its material remains. Think about the things you own today. What is your most important possession? Maybe it's something you're wearing or something sitting on your desk in front of you as you watch this presentation. What does this say about who you are, your sense of identity and your values? The objects that people made and used in the past were equally important to them and provide us with unique insights into their lives. The ornaments they wore, everyday items like pottery, things like the prehistoric wooden wheel on the bottom right of this slide that tells us about technological innovation, travel and trade or the items they buried with their dead that can tell us about their belief systems, like this Egyptian mummified cat. Archaeologists are not just interested in the artefacts that people left behind, however. We also study the landscapes and environments in which people lived in the past. We analyse finds like animal bone and ancient plant remains to understand what they ate. We look at the pollen preserved in buried soils to see how the landscape has changed or insect remains to understand the living conditions in medieval towns. Ancient peoples used natural materials for a wide range of other purposes too, including many organic items that survive only in exceptional circumstances, from basketry and cordage to glue and medicine. So how do archaeologists retrieve all this information? We use a really diverse range of methods, both in the field and in the lab. Most of you will probably know something about archaeological excavation. This is our primary technique for recovering finds and, most importantly, for understanding their context. Where something was found can tell you a lot about how it was used and what it meant to people in the past. In addition to excavation, we use a wide variety of non-invasive scientific techniques to help identify and map archaeological sites, from aerial photography by drone and satellite, to geophysical survey that can help us see beneath the soil. Today, most excavations are carried out by professional archaeologists in advance of the construction of motorways, housing estates and other development. Our archaeological heritage is protected as part of national and international legislation, and this means that archaeological research, survey and excavation has to be carried out before any major new building project can start. Here in UCD, we run our own student training excavations at the famous early medieval monastic site at Glendalough in County Wicklow. Not only are our own students involved, but also members of the local community. Our students and volunteers find excavation to be a really powerful way of connecting with the past, more alive and immediate than reading a history book. Here's local volunteer Cormac holding a find he made while digging with us. This is a small cross dating to the 12th century AD that was probably worn as a personal amulet. Most items of this sort have been found in Northern Britain and only five are known from Ireland, though similar finds from North Norway and Greenland show that Glendalough was part of an extensive network of travel and exchange across the North Atlantic. Scientific analysis demonstrates that this was made of jet from Whitby in Yorkshire and it has a tin in inlay we can imagine that this was worn by a pilgrim and that it meant a lot to that person. Not only was the cross itself a powerful symbol, but jet has electrostatic properties that mean that it is often viewed as a magical material. Let's hear Cormac take up the story. Uh, and I heard that you found a, a particularly significant artifact as well. Was that last year? That was last year, um, my first dig, and it was I've been at the birth of my two daughters and this, while it doesn't rank alongside it, it, it was really exciting and the reaction of the, the crew around me, the archaeologists in particular, it was like, yeah, somebody just had a, a baby boy or something like that. Oh, God. They were so excited about it. And what was it that you found? It was a dirty little piece of muck. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> and when I, when I rubbed it a bit, I realised that it was something that it was it was cut to a shape 
uh -huh. and it was a cross shape and there seemed to be something on the surface of it. Uh -huh. So uh, that was as much as I got to see it. They took it from me and <laughs> it was whipped uh, away it, very it, quickly. Yeah, <laughs> put it in the incubator. My God. And I've, all I've seen of it since is photographs. Well, I actually did get to see it uh -huh. um, at the beginning, earlier in the year, about February or so, uh -huh. when they had a, a talk in the community centre just down the road here uh -huh. about the previous season's finds. And that was, that's the great thing. You, you get to, to participate in the follow up and then uh, I was sent a copy of the article in Archaeology Ireland, mm -hmm. which uh, it was great. My photograph is in it, but <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice bit of bragging material. Yeah, it's better than being in the paper for, for committing a crime or something. Like that. <laughs> One of the particular strengths of archaeology is that it provides a deep time perspective on what it means to be human from the distant past to the present day. Paleolithic cave art dating to 20,000 years ago shows that humans have long had the cognitive and symbolic capacities to create extraordinary art. 5,000 year old cities excavated in Iran and Iraq raised questions over how and why people came to live together in urban centres and what the benefits and problems of such new ways of living might have been. The archaeology of the most recent past provides insights into the lives, aspirations and ideals of people who do not feature much in written histories, such as the poor of 19th century Ireland. This means that archaeology can offer unique insights into contemporary issues, such as the emergence of social inequality. This is a burial from the cemetery at Varna in Bulgaria, dating to around six and a half thousand years ago. This individual was furnished with an extraordinary array of gold ornaments and other grave goods which you can see here, suggesting that he was a wealthy and powerful person. Not all of the graves in the cemetery are so rich, however, indicating that this was a hierarchical society. How and why such differences between people emerged is a very important question. Climate change, sustainability, disease and conflict are all issues that archaeologists can address. On the top centre of this slide, you can see a human skull from southeast England dating to around 800 BC. It belonged to an elderly woman who was hit from behind with a sword. The cut mark can clearly be seen here. On the top right is another human skull, this time from Rajasthan in India, dating to around 2000 BC. Analysis of this indicates that this individual suffered from leprosy. On the bottom left, you can see one of my colleagues teaching our students about the archaeology of food and problems around food security in the past and the present. All of this means that archaeology can speak to issues that are both local and global. As a discipline, we have a strongly comparative perspective. The preservation of cultural heritage, for example, is a question of international as well as national significance. Cultural heritage is a key element of our personal identities and is also bound up with politics and society in the present. You might remember, for example, how the Temple of Bel in the ancient city of Palmyra in Syria was destroyed in 2015 by ISIS jihadists. Closer to home, the ownership of the Parthenon marbles, displayed in the British Museum in London, is fiercely contested by the Greek government who would like to see them return to Athens as a key element of Greek national heritage. Archaeology then is not just about the past but has significant implications in the present. Here are my own excavations at Frongoch. If any of you are doing history in school you might know that in the aftermath of Ireland's 1916 rising 1,500 men were interned at Frongoch in North Wales for their part in the rebellion. The original buildings that stood on the site were dismantled and demolished many years ago, but their foundations have survived beneath the turf. So far, we have found part of a communal cookhouse where the internees' meals were made, as well as latrine pits, though we decided not to excavate those. They might have been rather stinky. We've also found lots of artefacts including all sorts of pottery, iron nails, pieces of barbed wire, window glass, a fragment of clay pipe, fragments of medicine bottles and a button. The most exciting find was part of a leather boot, which you can see here on the right, 
which was literally sticking up out of the ground. Best of all, we've been lucky enough to be assisted on our excavations by descendants of some of the internees themselves, for whom the experience of archaeological excavation provided a very different way of engaging with and understanding their own past, a past that feels central to their identities in the present. So who do you need to be to study archaeology? Well, archaeology is a really broad discipline that spans the arts and social sciences and therefore suits students with a wide variety of interests and learning styles. You don't need to have any background knowledge to take archaeology at university, and there is no need to have studied any particular subjects at school. Most importantly, we're an open, friendly and supportive school with a great sense of community. We have an active student archaeology society which runs talks, excursions and social events throughout the year and celebrated its 75th anniversary in 2017. One of the great things about archaeology is that the teaching is not all lecture based. There are also field trips, seminars and practical sessions. Hands on classes and lab based study allow students to actively engage with the past. Our annual field school not only teaches students key archaeological techniques, but gets them involved in our own research. We're passionate about learning by doing. Our students don't just sit in lecture theatres and libraries. These students took our Archaeology of Food module and not only learned how people in the past processed and cooked their food, but tried out some of those ancient techniques themselves and, of course, got to sample the products. Our students also learn about ancient technologies. At our Centre for Experimental Archaeology, our staff and students have built a Mesolithic house, made prehistoric pottery, forged iron tools and lots of other things, as the next video will show you. I'm sat at the moment in a reconstruction of a Mesolithic house um, that we've just finished building. Up. And this house is based on an archaeological example from Mount Sandal in Northern Ireland, um, dating to about 8000 BC. It's a six metre diameter timber built structure covered with turf and with a fire in a pit in the centre. Our reconstruction of this building here is part of a experimental archaeology project. Of a project that tries to find out about the past by engaging materially with the sorts of things that people did in the past. And this building is part of the UCD Centre for Experimental Archaeology, which is a space set aside on campus at UCD to allow us to undertake these types of experiments. So we've done stoneworking, flint tool production, we've made stone axes, we've fired pottery, and now we've built a, a Mesolithic house. And we plan to build Viking houses, medieval houses, Bronze Age houses. These sorts of projects are vital for archaeologists. They tell us huge amounts about the past. Normally we, we dig up the, the remains of on archaeological sites, things which have survived the passage of time. And, and that's fantastic. That tells us an awful lot about how people lived in the past, the sorts of decisions they made, the societies they lived in. But at the same time, these are people who lived in a world which is very unfamiliar to us. Very few people living today have constructed timber buildings with turf roofs. So experimenting, trying to understand these processes, is a really valuable way of gaining insight into people's lives in the past. And this, the, the Mesolithic House, is the first large-scale construction of the Experimental Archaeology Centre here, but we hope it's the first of many that will allow us to address some of these questions about the past. So why should you study archaeology? As a discipline, archaeology makes you think. It's creative, interesting and engaging. It involves group activities like excavation, which makes it very social. Hands-on learning means that students get excellent training in problem solving. This means that archaeology students leave university with a great range of transferable skills including communication and presentation, data analysis and scientific methods, research, writing and interpretation, and perhaps most importantly, an ability to understand other people and to understand how societies work. In our increasingly globalised and fast changing world, 
the long-term perspective that archaeology can offer on what it means to be human is really valuable. Our students go on to work in the archaeological profession, museums and the cultural heritage sector, but also in related areas such as teaching and education, tourism, media, journalism, the creative industries, environmental policy, conservation and of course plenty of other careers too. You'll have an opportunity to ask questions live in a moment, but if you can't stick around, please do see our website and social media for further information on who we are and what we do.